first thing is to find out where the gaps are in the letter sound knowledge. Start with letter sounds in step one. Mum them up and then go through them one at a time, asking the child for the sound. And if it's correct, put it in one pile. And if any of them are incorrect, make a different pile of those. And then record the ones that are not known. Or you could use a letter sound sheet like this. And you could ask the child to say the sounds of each of the letter sounds and then record your findings. Although there are some children who muddle up the letter names and the letter sounds, and that will need to be sorted out in the intervention sessions. Generally speaking, older children cope well with these single letter sounds. Usually the serious gaps start to show with the digraphs in these steps. Make a record of the letter sounds that are not known and continue with assessing the alternative spellings of the letter sounds. Unless, of course, the child has shown that there are already many gaps in the letter sounds in the first page. It is better to initially concentrate on teaching the unknown letter sounds in steps two and three before worrying about the alternative spellings. The next thing to find out is how well the child is able to work out unknown words. And for this assessment, it is necessary to have a set of words that are unlikely to be familiar to the child. This usually ensures that the words have not already been memorised and the child, in order to read them, has to blend and decode them. Now, start with short words and progress to longer ones, like this. Simple words that they're not likely have to have met, but which they can decode. And that will tell you a great deal. Then analyse your findings. Was the child able to blend short words? Was the child successful at blending longer words? Of course, when assessing the child's skill of blending, it is best to use words that have letter sounds that you know are known by the child. You cannot expect accurate blending if the letter sounds are not known. Then, was the child confident and fluent with the blending? Did he or she do it automatically? Record your results and progress to finding out how good the child is at hearing the sounds in words, which is segmenting. Explain to the child that there are sounds in words and that you would like him or her to tell you the sounds. Give an example such as dog, d o g, and maybe a word with an initial consonant blend, such as sleep, s o e and then call out a few simple words that are not so familiar and ask the child to tell you the sounds, such as nib. The child will say, hopefully, n, i, b, or if it, that's three sounds, or shadow, sh, a, d, o. That's four sounds, or a longer one, crust, k, r, a, s, t. That's five sounds. The children do not have to count the sounds. They just have to say the sounds they can hear going from the beginning to the end of the word. And then after that, dictate the letter sounds that the child was able to recognise when he or she did the letter sound assessment. So, for example, this child has managed to get these ones correct and just a few in the other section. These are the ones that you dictate. You know they can recognize them because you've tested that. Now you want to know, can they write them? And then dictate six words so that you can see if they can write words. Um, words like jot, fax, shift, moat, orbit, and maybe the last one, moody. The child's got to think, mm. Ooh, two o's, ooh, and then the here the d, and the e at the end. They should know it is y, moody. Mentally analyze your findings and then record them. Could the child identify any sounds in the words? Could the child identify all the sounds in short words? Was the child confident and fluent at doing this? Could the child identify all the sounds in longer words? 
And was the child able to write from dictation the known letter sounds with correct formation? And then was the child able to write regular words from dictation and were the words phonically sensible? Now go through the tricky words that are introduced in steps 3, 4 and 5 and make a note of the words that cannot be read or spelt and then gradually teach them during the intervention sessions. The aim of these assessments is to identify where the problems are. Only then can a plan of action be developed. It can happen that a child is able to blend and segment words but has a poor knowledge of the letter sounds. Now, these children are usually the easiest to help. Often the child knows the letter sounds of the alphabet but has little or no knowledge of the digraphs and vowels. It helps when you say, no wonder you are struggling with your reading. You have not been taught or you have not learnt enough letter sounds. Now, you only know a bit of the code. Look at your assessment results. The letter sounds without a tick are the ones you do not know. And when you do know these, you will be able to read hundreds of words. And when you know these other letter sounds, you will be able to read virtually anything. That is, thousands and thousands of words. Now, I wonder how quickly you think you can learn these. Then as fast as possible, ensure that the unknown letter sounds are taught and that the child blends, segments and writes as many words as possible that use those letter sounds, as well as the letter sounds that are already known. It helps to put the letter sounds into the children's long-term memory when they are regularly dictated. And those letter sounds need to be known so well that they are never forgotten. And the teaching principles are just the same as in steps one to five.